Now that we have covered the Stellar network, we will explore the features of the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Consensus means achieving agreement across many validators in a network. Unlike a bank's centralized single ledger of account balances, the validators in a network must all agree on each new ledger of transactions periodically. The network must also be able to tolerate validators that lie or send incorrect messages. This process of coming to agreement, called consensus, should solve the classic double spend problem. There are several protocols for achieving consensus in a network. Bitcoin and Ethereum currently use proof of work to achieve consensus, a protocol where nodes on the network compete with computing power to solve cryptographic puzzles and reach consensus. Many other protocols in the distributed ledger space have implemented some form of Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or BFT. In BFT, validators send messages back and forth and use a voting process where a new ledger is confirmed if over 66% of the validators agree on that ledger. It is significantly faster and cheaper than proof of work, but sacrifices decentralization to achieve those features. In 2015, Professor Mazieres of Stanford introduced an alternative to BFT called the Stellar Consensus Protocol, or Federated Byzantine Agreement, a decentralized alternative to BFT. The best way to understand Stellar's Federated Byzantine Agreement, or FBA, is to compare its features to the features of Proof of Work and BFT. The first feature is open or closed membership or who can participate in the consensus process. In proof of work, anyone with a mining rig can participate in consensus, and miners, the equivalent of a stellar validator, can join and leave the network without impacting consensus. In a BFT environment, there must be a recommended validator list defined by a central authority, often the company behind the protocol. Anyone can spin up a validator, but you can only participate in consensus if the authority adds you to the list. This requirement for a recommended validator list means that BFT is a centralized and closed membership system. Even if you have 1 million nodes on the validator list, or if you remove the central authority's own validators, you'd still be centralized because there's one recommended validator list. In FBA, there is no recommended validator list chosen by a central authority. Rather, each validator decides which other validators they trust, and their list of trusted validators is called their quorum slice. The quorum slices of each validator overlap to form a quorum, or network-wide consensus, on a transaction. Without the need for one centralized authority to decide on the validator list, you create an open membership network. Anyone can spin up a validator and participate in consensus if any other participating validator adds you to their quorum slice. Because there is no one master authority deciding which nodes get to participate in consensus, the network's construction inherently allows for growing decentralization, unlike BFT, as more and more nodes are added to the network and new quorum slices form. So to summarize this feature, quorum slices allow for open membership and therefore decentralization. The second feature is safety. According to what is called the FLP impossibility proof, in distributed asynchronous systems like Stellar, a consensus mechanism can prefer at most two of these three properties, fault tolerance, safety, and liveness. This is a proven result. Any distributed consensus system must sacrifice a preference for one of these features. Fault tolerance means that the system can survive the failure of a validator at any point. Many consensus protocols choose this as one of their two preferred properties. Protocols often differ, though, when it comes to safety versus liveness. Safety is a guarantee that something bad will never happen. That bad thing is an accidental fork. This means that if the network cannot agree on the ledger, it will not fork, and the validators will not create two different ledgers. The network will stop making progress, and you'll have to go in and manually figure out what is going on. 
Liveness is a guarantee that something good will happen. That good thing is ledgers closing. This means that the network will always close a ledger to be live and accepting of future transactions. This means that validators may diverge on different ledgers, causing an accidental fork in double spins. To boil down the difference between safety and liveness, you can't be sure that a distributed system won't both accidentally fork or safety and that it'll keep making progress or liveness. So you have to choose which of those options you want to forego. Proof of work favors liveness over safety, meaning that if, say, China's internet were to get cut off from the rest of the world, a fork in the Bitcoin blockchain would occur. Miners in China would keep building on one blockchain, and miners outside of China would fork and create their own ledger, causing potential double spins. BFT protocols vary in their preference for safety versus liveness, but the Stellar Consensus Protocol version of FBA favors safety. In the event of an accidental fork, it halts progress of the network until consensus can be reached. This is a crucial feature in the minds of central banks, banks, and other fiat anchors when deciding which distributed ledger tech to build on. The third feature is low latency, or transaction speed. In Bitcoin's implementation of proof of work, the computational puzzles involved in mining a block take about 10 minutes. And because Bitcoin favors liveness over safety, you must wait for six blocks to be confirmed before having certainty that your transaction was included on the primary chain. This causes transaction times in the range of 60 minutes. Unlike proof of work, there is no mining process in BFT and FBA. It is just message passing with a voting process. Because it's message passing, the transactions confirm much faster, every three to five seconds. And because these protocols favor safety over liveness, you don't have to wait for several ledgers to get confirmed. This preference for safety essentially shortens the transaction time by 6 to 12x. The final feature is asymptotic security. This means no amount of computing power can overtake the network. Proof-of-work does not exhibit asymptotic security, as some irrational attacker or someone with outside incentives could defeat proof-of-work consensus with what is called a 51% attack. If you control 51% of the computing power on the network, you dictate consensus. But in BFT and FBA, an attack using computing power is not possible because solving cryptographic puzzles is not a component of consensus. Instead, validators sign their approval of new ledgers using their private keys. For bad actors to guess the private keys of each validator, it would take a currently impossible amount of computing power, making BFT and FBA asymptotically secure. Since applying computing power to sabotaging consensus isn't possible with BFT and FBA, bad actors are left with collusion. In BFT, over 66% of validators would have to collude to take over consensus. But this is unlikely, as a central authority has control over which validators are allowed on the validator list. In FBA, there is a complex web of overlapping quorum slices that make it almost impossible for even a supermajority of nodes to collude to control consensus. An attacker could create 1 million validators, and unless a majority of other validators go so far as to add them to quorum slices, they will be unable to affect consensus. In proof of work, you shift that trust onto the hope that one group is not able to control 51% of the mining power. So to recap, FBA and the Stellar Consensus Protocol provide an open membership and therefore decentralized alternative to BFT, that closes transactions in three to five seconds, prefers safety over liveness, and is not susceptible to the 51% attacks of proof of work.